I'm Mark Rossner. I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cisco Server Products Group. This video takes a closer look at virtual local storage features and management in UCSM series, especially including LUN states, lifecycle, orphan disks, how to reclaim them and how to clean them up. If you're not at all familiar with the concepts or basic configuration, if you haven't seen anything about storage profiles or disk group policies, please see the introductory video, UCSM series virtual local storage. Tiny review of what we've got here. Chassis has solid state drives and a RAID controller that are a shared resource for all service profiles that get associated with a server in that particular chassis. Here's a service profile not yet associated with any server, so it has a disk specification for its virtual local storage, but it can't actually have any storage allocated because we don't even know what chassis we're talking about yet. As the server gets associated in this particular chassis, the specification from the service profile can actually point to an actual LUN device and an actual RAID group that gets created in the shared storage. Once that RAID group gets created, the remaining space is available for more virtual drives in the same chassis that have the same RAID group policy. They could be all different sizes. They could be from all sorts of different service profiles. Now I want to look at the exact same scenario again, but with a couple more advanced details. Here's the service profile not yet associated with any server. And the one detail I want to look at now in the storage profile specification of the virtual disk is a flag that says auto deploy or no auto deploy. We've always been assuming that it's set to auto deploy. We're just going to look a little more about what it means over the next couple of slides. There's also an administrative state for this LUN init service profile that's either online or undeployed and of course if auto deploy is set then the minute that the service profile comes to life then the administrative state is online the, the configuration state says config not applied there is no LUN actually being referred to because we don't even know what chassis we're talking about yet and here comes the actual association and allocation of the LUN. The configuration state is now applied. The administrative state is still online. And a couple more details about the LUN. The LUN has an identification name, also called a reference name, which is just taken from the name of this disk specification in the storage profile and then adds a suffix. And it also has a unique ID that's just generated by the system. You cannot change this. You will be able to rename the LUN and we'll see the reason for that a little bit later. In UCS Manager, here's my storage profile section on the new storage tab. Here's a storage profile that has one boot disk which specifies one virtual LUN that has a size and the RAID group policy and I was just looking a little closer at this auto deploy versus no auto deploy. So what if the disk specification in a storage profile says no auto deploy? The difference is when the service profile comes to life, the virtual disk specification is in an undeployed state and when it means that when I associate the service profile it still doesn't allocate storage for this drive. I have to manually do an operation that says set the admin state to online for this virtual storage specification. And at that time, it would allocate the storage and go online applied. We're going to see later why you might want to do this. Here, everything is online. What happens if I disassociate this service profile? What happens is that the relationship between this service profile disk specification and the LUN in the chassis is maintained even though we're not even associated with the server in this chassis. So that's a little odd. The state of the LUN specification is still online even though the configuration state is not in use. Though you can imagine why we do this because if I then take and start in this exact same state and associate this service profile with any server in the same chassis, nothing happens to that association. The configuration just becomes online. The content of that LUN is preserved unless you had a scrub policy. We'll talk about that later. Notice when I do the gesture change service profile association, it is exactly precisely a disassociate followed by an associate. So everything we've said about disassociate and associate would apply. It would just be the intermediate state went by pretty fast. Ergo, 
and this is a lot different from B series. A service profile is always completely migratable in the same chassis without losing local disk data. In B series, if you wanted to do that, you'd have to physically move local disks. Just to do a live demo in UCS Manager of what we've got so far, I've got an associated service profile that's running a Linux OS. I'm going to need to look carefully because what I want to demonstrate is disassociation and association to a server in the same chassis. Remember, that's the exact same thing as change service profile association to a server in the same chassis. Well, it's currently here, you can see in chassis two. So I'm going to want to make sure I pick another server in chassis two. Storage profile being used has that one disk that has that specification name boot disk which has also been used as the prefix for the actual deployed LUN here. Here's the LUN ID I was talking about and I actually have an installed OS on this virtual local storage and here it is and just to demonstrate migration of a service profile with no change in the content of the virtual local storage. Let me halt this guy so I can disassociate and reassociate nicely. Okay, wonderful. Let me do it just one step at a time so we can see the intermediate state. So let me say disassociate service profile. Let me take a look at the storage now. And notice that this disk still exists, the same ID, the same reference name, but it's not in use. So let me go associate with a different server in the same chassis, chassis 2, just to prove what happens. Okay, we have our really fast configuration of service profiles in UCS M series. That's done already. Let me re-invoke the KVM, which I have to do because it switched servers, and we'll be able to watch it boot off the virtual local storage because the content didn't get deleted, and we're referring to the same exact LUN. So there we go, and we're back in business. Now let's take a look at deleting a service profile and our first look at what's called an orphaned LUN. So here I do the gesture to delete a service profile. Everything is gone except the actual LUN itself in the shared storage and its content is intentionally preserved. However, they're sitting in the shared storage. It's marked as orphaned. As you can imagine, the reason that it's preserved and only marked as orphaned is there'll be a way of reclaiming an orphan LUN and getting my data back and attached to a new service profile. So let's see how to do that. What I'm imagining here is I have a new service profile set up that's going to reclaim this LUN and its data. There is a detail that the LUN specification or the administrative state has to be undeployed for this LUN here and it has to be associated already with the server so that we can tell which chassis we're talking about. So this is the one example where if you intend to do this, have a new service profile in order to reclaim LUNs, you might set the flag in the LUN specification to no auto deploy. If you set the flag to auto deploy and you associated, you'd have a new LUN. And then if you wanted to undeploy it, that guy would get orphaned. So anyway, now I'm in the right state. There's a gesture to reclaim an orphaned LUN in the GUI that would give you a menu of orphaned LUNs that are in the same chassis and the correct size and the correct gray group policy matching the service profile or storage profile LUN specification. And lo and behold, that LUN would become unorphaned and attached to your service profile storage profile disk specification. Let me demonstrate deleting a service profile, orphan disks, and reclaiming orphan disks. Here was my existing live server with service profile. Halt that nicely so I can disassociate and still have a clean disk with content. OK, now let me delete this service profile. The service profile is gone. There's no way I can, therefore, look in it and see anything about the state of the disk. So let me show where you see that back in equipment. Remember this one was in chassis 2, so I can go look at chassis 2. And storage, and on the LUN sub-tab of the storage, I can see that this disk is now 
orphaned and I can't even see what service profile used to own it. If you're going to be dealing a lot with orphan disks and you want to know more about which service profile used to own them, you might rename this reference name and we'll look at that in a minute. So let me get a new service profile that is going to reclaim this disk. What I did is I made a new storage profile whose disk specification down here says no auto deploy. So when I first associate this service profile, I'll be set to be able to reclaim an old disk rather than create a new virtual one. And I've cloned my old service profile and called it new SPRH for reclaim. And the only difference that I then made was in the storage profile to go use that storage profile that then has the do not deploy flag set. I'm not able to reclaim my LUN until it's associated. Notice the claim orphan LUN is grayed out until I get in there. And of course, I need to associate it with a server in Chassis 2 if I want to reclaim an orphan LUN in Chassis 2. Now I have an associated service profile, but with a disk that's still just a specification and not attached to any disk. It's still undeployed, config state not applied. And now I can claim the orphan LUN in the chassis, which shows up on the menu because it has the right size, the right chassis, the right RAID group policy. So now my LUN is online again, just to prove this all worked nicely. Let me invoke the KVM console. There it found the LUN. Let's just prove it was the same LUN that it was reclaimed because it'll boot the same OS since the content on the LUN didn't get deleted. And there we go. And we're back. If I move a service profile to a different chassis, there's a bit of unexpected behavior. So here's a service profile that was associated with a server in a particular chassis with a particular LUN, and now it's disassociated. The LUN isn't orphaned at that time, remember. Now I associate it with a server in a different chassis, and this is what happens. The old disk gets orphaned, and a new LUN in a new chassis with a different ID, but the same name as the original disk in the original chassis gets created. No, the content does not get copied over here. It's just a new disk. That's likely not exactly expected. What do you think happens if I then move it back? Well, yes, it's going to go back and automatically reclaim that other disk based on the name. This is the only thing that's automatically done with UCS Manager based on this disk name. So the new one would get orphaned and you'd flip back to the old one and you'd get your content back. Here's an example of that. Here's a service profile that's associated. Here, let me know what chassis it's in. It's in chassis one. Let's look at its storage. It's got one virtual LUN with the reference name boot disk three in chassis one. Let me disassociate and associate with a server in the other chassis. Remember, change service profile association is exactly the same as disassociate and then associate to some server in chassis two. Notice from the service profile point of view, I still have a disk with reference name boot disk three, but it's in a different chassis. Let me go look at the chassis view. And in chassis one, the original chassis, the disk that had reference name boot disk three is now orphaned. And in chassis two, there's now a new disk named boot disk three. It would not have copied the contents from the disk named boot disk three from the original chassis to this chassis. The behavior might not be exactly expected, but that's what it is right now. You can rename a LUN, and I'm talking about that LUN reference name as is shown inside this red rectangle here. That original name, like the example shown, boot disk one is taken from a prefix in the disk specification in the storage profile and then you could rename it any time if you want to rename it when it's not orphaned. 
when it's still being pointed to by a service profile, you go to the service profile storage view and the whole idea would be rename it then so you know what it is and then it'll give you a better idea what it is if it gets orphaned. If it is already orphaned and you have some idea what it is and want to rename it, you can still rename it from the chassis storage view. Finally, you can delete an orphan LUN. has to be an orphan LUN. has to be from the chassis storage view because there is no service profile. The system will automatically scrub the content of that disk before it does deallocate it and it's returned to the general pool of chassis storage. And then it's gone. And that's, of course, why you might have wanted to rename these disks before they ever got orphaned so you know what they are when they got orphaned. Just to show that, here's a service profile that is associated and has a disk with this reference name boot disk 3, which isn't very useful. So let me rename a reference LUN and maybe call it Pixie RH7 2 boot so I have some better idea what it is if it gets orphaned. So you can see it confirms that it has a new name. Just to show an orphaned LUN and deleting an orphan LUN. Here's one that's orphaned that has reference name boot disk 3 and you can tell, oh, I didn't rename this one earlier. I'm not so sure what it is, but just to demonstrate deleting it, there it is. So now it's gone and you saw it disappear from the list. One last thing, remember if you had scrub policies that specified you wanted to scrub disk, then that would negate everything we've said about content being preserved. Everything we've said about the LUN lifecycle would still be the same, but scrub policies do work on this virtual local storage on disassociate or delete, so you would not be able to migrate service profiles even in the same chassis and preserve content because the content would have been scrubbed on the disassociate part. Thank you for watching.